Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about makeup products I've changed my mind about. Okay, not really. Just kidding. Okay, that was stupid. But seriously, welcome back. So in this screencast, we're going to talk about Git Flow. In particular, we're going to talk about how to do Git Flow in Visual Studio and Azure DevOps VSDS. Uh, when you've set up a project the way that I showed you in the previous video. So first off, why Git flow? Well, first thing is this. My teams are generally geographically distributed. So I'll have developers in India, Ireland, wherever I can get them. And of course I'm in Dallas doing my thing. And in order for us to work, you know, we can't just, you know, yell down the hall or something at the guy. So Gitflow scales out nicely, allowing us to all work without stepping on each other's toes, creating constant merge conflicts, stuff like that, that you can get if you're trying to work in just one branch. So that brings me into keeping everybody's work separate. So each feature branch that we're working in is separate from the others. And so each developer working on their user story is working in a feature branch and they have their own little sandbox. They don't have to worry about what somebody else is doing for their user story on a different feature branch. We only have to worry about it when the feature's finished and we're trying to merge back to the develop branch. It is pretty easy to learn. There's, you know, it's a little fiddly, the little extra step, start feature, so on and so forth that we'll get into. But it is pretty straightforward. There is good tool support. First, Gitflow is built into the Git command line tool. I won't be showing the command line tool here. Uh, there's plenty of other videos you can go see if you're interested. I may do one later, but for now, forget it. Because it's available through a Visual Studio plugin. The plugin, I would say, works pretty good. There's, again, a little fiddly. Sometimes things aren't exactly the way I'd like them, but hey, it gets the job done. So the normal Git flow process looks like this. First off, before we even get into it, you've got a Git repo. Uh, second, somebody has already done the Git flow in it to the repo, getting everything initialized. This would usually be the team man, you know, the team leader, or somebody like that who came in first, and then, <clears throat> you know, the rest of the developers were onboarded to the project. So as a developer, you're going to show up, and the team lead should just say, "Hey, we do Git flow, so do it the right way." So you shouldn't have to do worry about these first two steps. You do have to worry about is doing the actual work. The process is you start your feature. You perform the work. You, know, you go in, edit the code, test the code, unit tests, all that stuff. All good. And then when you're all finished, you finish the feature. Finishing the feature takes the content of your feature branch and merges it back into the develop branch, which is where we have a problem. My version of Git flow and I suspect it's similar to what a lot of other people who do the same thing that I do have come up with. So first problem is, is you can't push to the main branches. So, you know, I've got four branches that have policies that prevent pushing. So the actual workflow becomes this. You start the feature just like normal. You perform your work just like normal, but you finish the feature and you do not merge back to develop. Instead, you create a pull request, and that is what finishes the feature. That's how it gets done. Let's go take a look and see it actually being done in Visual Studio. Okay, we've got Visual Studio up, and the project's already loaded. What we're going to do for this project, you know, it's the same project I used in the previous screencast. There's not really been any work done in it. We're going to add Font Awesome to our style sheet so we can use it. But before I do anything, let's go ahead and just hit 
play and bring the project up, make sure it builds and we can run it and take and know what we're working with before we do anything else. So I've hit run and I'm going to fast forward from here. Okay, everything comes up, looks good. One of the things we'll do as we work through, I'll change one of these icons, I'll probably change the home icon to something from Font Awesome. I know that that uh, the template uses glyph icons, uh, but we're going to use Font Awesome instead. So we're good to go. We're ready to work. So I'll close this. Now I will point out before I get into this, uh, the template as it sets up, and this is not about the template, but just no, it does have live updates. So I could leave the website up in the web browser, edit in Visual Studio Code or in Visual Studio or Notepad for all that matters. And every time I save, uh, the web browser would get updated with the latest stuff. Very cool way to work, but it's not really what we're here to talk about. What we are here to talk about is doing Git flow. So before I make any changes, I come here to Team Explorer and I'm going to click on Git flow and then I'm going to click Start Feature. And we're going to give it a name. We'll just call it add, come on, add font. Awesome. Create feature. And that sets up our project for me to start working. So we'll come back over here to Solution Explorer. And in this case, since the type of project I'm working on, I need to add Font Awesome via uh, NPM. Again, this isn't about doing Angular or any of that stuff. This is about Gitflow. Here I am on that, at the command line in PowerShell, and we're going to add Font Awesome using NPM. So NPM install font dash awesome minus minus save, hit enter, and NPM does its magic. Again, it's not what this is about, so I'm going to skip forward. Okay, NPM magic is done. We've got the Font Awesome package loaded, so we'll come here to Training Web, go to the Client app, and we can see that package.json has been updated. Scroll down, and there we are. Font awesome. Isn't that awesome? Next step is Angular CLI. I've got to go in here and add the style sheet to my project. So there's the style sheet. So I've added Font Awesome to Angular CLI, which that'll handle import and style sheet and all like that for me. So let's make a change to the application itself so that we can actually see the fact that Font Awesome has been added. So we'll go here to the nav menu and I'm going to do what I said I would do, which is we'll take off this glyph icon. Do FA, FA dash. We we'll use coffee because coffee is what we should do here. As far as I can tell, this is all I need to do. We'll go ahead, we'll run it, and once again, I'll skip forward. So we're done with our coding work. What we need to do now is update the repo and finish the feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the project, or the solution in this case, and click commit and put a comment in there, say added font awesome. And I'm going to use this commit all and push shortcut, which in one step shoves everything up to the repo, we're good to go. Happy day. So back up to the top, 
Now to get flow, and we're going to finish the feature. To work in this environment and what I'm talking about, we are not going to delete our remote branch because I can't push my feature branch into the development branch because I have a policy preventing that, but I can delete the local. We don't need to keep it on the workstation. So we just click OK, and that will finish up the feature locally on my workstation. Click yeah, go ahead, we're good to go. Close all the windows. So to finish everything off, what we're going to do is go to VSTS, or Azure DevOps, excuse me, and we're going to go to our repo and we're going to go to our branches. Now, I'm coming here because I've got to create a pull request in order to finish this off. So you can see here we've got policies on all of the branches, but there's no policy here. There's add font awesome, click the ellipses, and we see new pull request. So we click that, brings us over here. We're going to change this to develop. And we'll just call this add font awesome, added font awesome. I could add reviewers, and I'll talk about work items in a future uh, screencast, but for the moment, we'll just skip that. We click Create, and that created the pull request. Now, this would go to your team lead or whoever it is who's supposed to do the stuff, and they'd look at your code and approve it or ask you to make some changes, all that stuff. But in this case, it just comes to me. I approve it and then I click complete, boom, and I also tell it to delete the, the uh, feature branch. So I click complete and magic happens. So now when we go to develop and we navigate down to client app and we click on our packages.json we can see that font awesome is here so we're good to go in the portal and this means that the rest of the development team working on this when they do a pull from the repo they'll get my changes now uh, we can also see here in branches that well, there's no feature branches right now because, well, we just deleted it. All right, that's it for this. Yeah, that was pretty easy, right? Cool. So that was the happy path. Things can go wrong. We get merge conflicts that just have you scratch your head what the blazes just happened. Um, sometimes the VS plugin doesn't show the create pull request on the menu. So then you're having to go to the portal and it's just, it's a pain in the neck. But they're not specific to Git flow. These are things that just happen with Git when you've got a lot of people working. And if somebody, if people aren't merging, or not merging, but you know, checking in their code frequently, um, that usually has been the main symptom for cause or the cause of these symptoms all right don't take what i'm telling you is the end all be all of git flow and git i am i use it i think i'm pretty good with it but i don't consider myself you know a master or anything so here are some resources that you can go look at pluralsight has a number of really good courses that take you through using git flow and using Git, I recommend watching those. YouTube has a bunch of videos as well. Feel free to search for them. So thank you very much. 
usual YouTube, you know, makeup tutorial, like and subscribe. I should have little boxes around here pointing to other videos I'm doing, but hey, you know, I have a day job. So, you're lucky I got this one done. So, hey, you have a good one. Talk to you later.